Brett Ecker will be talking about laparoscopic versus open ventral hernia repair, one-year outcomes, costs, and using a statewide claims database. Thank you for the privilege of the podium. And we have no disclosures. A ventral hernia is a congenital or acquired defect in the abdominal fascia. Incisional ventral hernias develop following an estimated 3 to 13 percent of abdominal laparotomies. There are more than 2 million laparotomies performed annually in the United States. Multiply those numbers, we're dealing with a major public health concern. The literature includes robust comparative analyses of laparoscopic and open ventral hernia repair, but published randomized controlled trials and meta-analyses. Laparoscopic repair has been associated with prolonged operative times in most but not all trials. In regards to perioperative morbidity, laparoscopic repair has been associated with an increased incidence of, of um, enterotomy, while open repair has been associated with an increased incidence of wound infection. There's no observed differences in recurrence rate between the two techniques. Yet for a procedure primarily performed to improve quality of life, there are surprisingly few longitudinal analyses of surgical complications and hospital readmissions. Moreover, in an era where health economics have an increasing role in surgical decision making, there is limited, val uh, limited data evaluating the relative economic value of laparoscopic and open ventral hernia repair. Comparative analyses of the two techniques have revealed that operative costs may be higher for laparoscopic repair, but that the overall cost of hospitalization is less. In the second study by Colavita et al., the national inpatient sample was used as a data source which is limited to inpatient hospitalization data. Laparoscopic repair was associated with shorter length of stay in this study, potentially reducing the window for post-operative patients captured and potentially biasing the results. And there are no published longitudinal cost analyses to date. So with this in mind, we performed a retrospective population level analysis using inpatient discharge data from California and New York State between 2007 and 2011. The ICD-9 introduced the diagnosis code for laparoscopic ventral hernia repair in late 2008. Hence, inclusion criteria were adult patients who underwent elective ventral hernia repair with graft or prosthesis during 2009 or 2010. This allowed us two years of data look back and a minimum full year follow-up in all cases. And we used patient linkage techniques to extract information on each patient's surgical history and subsequent admissions. Our primary outcomes of interest were readmission and revisional hernia repair and the associated cost of this care. So just starting with our demographics, our study cohort was a little over 13,000 patients. About 9,000 underwent open repair and about 4,000 underwent laparoscopic repair. Average patient age was 59 years and 61% were female. There were no significant differences in patient age, gender, race, or ethnicity between the cohorts. However, the laparoscopic group had a significantly higher proportion of patients with obesity, while the open cohort had more patients with multiple medical comorbidities, as measured by the Alexander scale. In regards to utilization, laparoscopy was associated with commercial insurance, while open repair with Medicare and Medicaid insurance. There were also significant differences in hospital bed size and hospital ownership between the two cohorts. We evaluated longitudinal outcomes by measuring the incidence of readmission at marks of 90 days, six months, and one year, as well as total readmissions and need for revisional hernia repair at any time following the index repair. All-cause readmission was lower for laparoscopic repair at all fixed time marks, as were rates of revisional hernia repair and the total cost of care at one year. On a multivariable analysis controlling for significant differences in patient and hospital characteristics between the cohort, laparoscopic repair remains significantly associated with fewer readmissions, a lower risk for revisional hernia repair, and lower total costs at one year. For concern that our multivariable model may have inadequately accounted for differences in patient characteristics that was then driving this result, we a priori defined readmission in two ways. Readmission was defined as both all causes shown here and also as secondary, to, as secondary to select diagnoses. These were abdominal pain, small bowel obstruction, wound infection, percutaneous drainage of collection, and fistula occurrence. After making this restriction, a total of 12.1% of patients were admitted at least once during the follow-up period. Open repair was significantly associated with an increased frequency 
bowel obstruction, wound infection, percutaneous drainage of collection, and fistula occurrence. And all of these remain significant on a multivariable model. The total cost for readmission for these related diagnoses and procedures was 2,477 less for laparoscopic repairs compared to open repair in our model. And finish on that. So in summary, by survey of a contemporary cohort of patients who underwent ventral hernia repair, open repair was associated with a higher incidence of postoperative readmissions, including need for revisional hernia repair when compared to its laparoscopic, uh, as compared to laparoscopic repair. And in congruence, laparoscopic repair was associated with reduced costs, and this was both for all cause and diagnosis specific readmissions. The increased costs associated with, lapros with open repair may represent differences in technique, differences in hernia characteristics between the cohorts or both, and further studies are necessary to prospectively evaluate the associated cost of ventral hernia repair in a, in a longitudinal fashion. Yet we hope that the individual components of our analysis provide information that could be important for helping to guide patients and providers. Thank you for your time. Any questions from the floor? I'll start with a, a question. Can you uh, talk a little bit about the positives and negatives of using claims databases? For sure. Yeah, there's certainly some issues with that. So the benefit of this is our study cohort is 13,500 patients. And the good data that you get from it is once a patient and a provider have decided we're going to decide, they've decided we're going to do an open or a laparoscopic repair, this gives you a fair estimate of overall now what are the associated complications and what can you expect. The, the limitations of this database are there's differences possibly in coding between these two states or limitations of coders in general. And then second, in this study in particular, the biggest limitation is that we don't have the hernia size between the two cohorts and we don't know if they're different. And so it's not necessarily a helpful study in, in guiding providers as to decide which procedures should I do, and I think a randomized controlled trial or meta-analyses of these would be better in influencing that decision. That, that, that was one thing I was going to ask you about. Yeah. You don't know anything about the hernia, so if you look at your conclusions, you would say we need to be doing more laparoscopic ventral hernias, and it's about 30% of the market out there when you look at ventral incisional hernia, so why are we not doing more of our ventral incisional hernias laparoscopically? So we assume that the right patient was picked by the right surgeon for the right procedure in this, which is a major assumption. Um, but that for carefully selected patients in these cases, that laparoscopic repair has better outcomes. And that may reflect multiple things besides just technique. And so more than anything, we hope that these results kind of um, call attention to the need for longitudinal cost analysis and that they could be approached in a, a prospective manner. Um, but by no means should this be a direct comparison. And unfortunately, an odds ratio necessarily sets up a direct comparison. Right. But I think uh, some of the descriptive statistics of our study are probably the most helpful. There's a question on here. Was there any way to differentiate uh, between the uh, types of ventral hernias through claims data? Uh, so no, there could be a flank or it could be a midline incision. using a. Um, data look back, we were able to exclude prior hernia repair, so we were hopefully capturing the index repair in all cases, but the type of repair as to where the location was, we can't say, as well as the type of mesh that was used and other sort of uh, more technical aspects. Any other questions? All right, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you.